Now, if you only have one form, doing it this way is good enough, quite easy to follow, I hope. However, it can definitely be better. Here we have a very basic contact form. It has a name, email, phone, and message field. There's already server-side validation in place, so if we hit send, a request is made to the server and we get back these nice error messages. What I want to do is add front-end validation using Intus. So the first thing I'll do is open my terminal and install it using npm. If we look at the code, we have a form object created using the inertia form helper, and then a submit function, which is called whenever the user submits the form. What we want to do is tap into the submit function, perform the validation, and only make the post request if the form data is valid. Using Intus, we can create a validation object. We can go here and say let validation equals Intus, and let's import Intus from Intus, dot validate, and this function takes in the form data, rules, and messages if you want to overwrite any error messages or field names. So we'll do validate, and then we'll pass in the form data, and an object where the key is the field name, and the value is an array of rules. So we'll have name, array, and then is required, and we'll import this from into slash rules, then we'll have email, and this one is also required, but needs to be an email, so we'll do is email, and we'll import that from into rules, and then we'll have phone, and this is optional, so we'll pass in an empty array, and message, which is also required. Now, this validation object comes with two methods, so let's console load them. I'll do console.log validation, and the first method is passes, and this one tells us whether or not the validation passes, and the second one is errors, and this one returns us an object where the key is a field name, and the value is the first error message. So if I save this, refresh the browser, go to the console, hit send, we have false because our form validation failed, and then we have an object with key as a field name, and the value as the error message. So here under email, if I type something in, hit send again, we have false because the validation fails, and then we have email must be a valid email. That means we can go here and only make the post request if the validation passes. So I'll grab this and we'll say if validation passes, make the post request. Otherwise, what we'll need to do is set the form errors. And using the inertia form helper, we can do form.setError, and this one accepts an object, which is this one. And now, if we go here, hit refresh, hit send, we have validation errors, but as you can see in the network tab, there's no request being made. Now, one problem we have is that nowhere here we are resetting the validation. So for example, if I type in a valid email and hit send, the email is valid, but we still have the error message. So here, before we perform the validation, we must make sure we clear the form errors. So we'll do form clear errors. And now if we do that again, hit send, we have error messages, and our valid email. Hit send again, the error is gone. Now, if you only have one form, Doing it this way is good enough, quite easy to follow, I hope. However, it can definitely be better. What I don't like about this is that if we were to have more than one form, we'd always need to clear the errors, always need to call into validate, always need to check if the validation passes, and always need to set the errors. Ideally, we should only call post, and the form object should be smart enough to handle the validation on its own. Another thing I don't like is having the validation rules separated from the form fields. They should be collocated. They should appear in the same place. What we can do is create ourselves a view composable that will absorb all this repetition and give us a simpler API. 
So let's close the browser window and create a new file. I'll go to resources.js and let's just put it here. I'll do use validated form.js. Let's put all this to the side and we'll do export default function use validated form. To start, we can accept the form and the rules as parameters. And then what we want to do in this composable is intercept the form post method call, perform the validation, and if it fails, prevent the request from being made and set the error messages. We can do that by using a JavaScript proxy. We can do return new proxy. And the way this works is you provide an object also known as the target, in our case form, and then a second object known as the handler that will allow us to intercept attempts to access properties in the target. You can think of a JavaScript proxy as being a Laravel middleware, but instead of intercepting requests, we are intercepting method calls to the target object. To intercept attempts to access properties in the target, we can define a get method on the handler that receives the target and the property wanting to be accessed as parameters. So here we'll have target and prop. Now, if prop equals equals post, let's console log something. Something here. Otherwise, let's just let it true and return target of prop. To test this out, we can go back to our contact component, use validated form, pass in the form and then the rules. Let's grab them from here, paste it in, go in the browser, fill in the form, hit send, and here's our console log. That means we can go here, perform our validation, and if it fails, Instead of returning the target prop, which will send the post request, we'll return a function that does nothing. So let's grab all this, paste it in. Instead of having this hard-coded object, we'll pass the rules which we receive as parameter. Let's remove this. And now if the validation fails, we'll set the errors and return a function that does nothing. So we'll do return function that does nothing. And now here we can basically remove everything. We'll just have form post. Let's go into browser, refresh, go to the network tab, hit send. Here's our validation, no request being made. So everything works. However, if we were to have a form that sends a put request, uh, we only check for posts, so that won't work. Luckily, post, put, patch, delete, and even get, they all use the submit function. So we can go here and replace this with submit. And this will work with put, post, get, delete, and so on. Let's test it one more time. Refresh, send, no request being made. Type something in. Email must be a valid email. So this works. One more thing we can improve on is instead of passing in a form object and a rules object that looks kind of the same, we can pass in a single object whose values are an array of two elements. The first array element being the default value, while the second one being an array of rules. So here we can do something like this. Let's grab all the fields, paste it in. Let's do some PHP storm magic to grab these. Go up, turn this into an array and paste the rules as the second element. Now we can delete all these. Hit save, go to our use validated form composable and instead of receiving both the form and rules, we'll receive, let's say, definition. Now we need to take this definition object and turn it into two separate objects. So we'll have let fields and 
let rules. So we'll need to loop through the definition object. We'll do for let field in definition. And we'll set fields of field equals definition of field. And as I said, the first element of the array is the default value. So here we'll have zero. And then we'll have rules of field equals definition of field one, which is the second element in the array. And let's also set the default of an empty array. Then we'll need to create the form. So we'll do let form equals use form, pass it the fields. And let's import use form from inertia. Let's test it out. We'll go in the browser, refresh, hit send, and here is our validation. However, one last thing we need to do is make sure we also allow the user of our composable to pass in a remember key. This allows them to remember the form data in the browser history. So we'll go back here and we'll have a second argument called remember key. And if we have a remember key, we'll call use form remember key comma fields Otherwise, we'll call use form of fields. Let's do one final test, and I think we're done. Send, email is required. Send again, email must be a valid email. Let's pass in a valid email. Send again, our validation message is gone. And that was it. That's how you can use Intus to add front-end validation to your Inertia.js apps. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.